Alrighty then. We are in my one of my favorite games currently, anyway, which is Just Cause 4. Now this game, it did not do well at launch, and I understand why, because Just Cause 4 suffers from a major problem where there is simply just no motivation to really complete any of the things it has to offer. There's just none whatsoever. It's just pacing isn't really that good. So many people who picked this game up, they just simply dropped it or they didn't bother to complete it, right? So, I still believe, though, that Just Cause 4, even though I think Just Cause 3 is uh, the best game in the franchise, Just Cause 4 is probably the sort of culmination of the mechanics of Just Cause 4 being perfect. This It, it basically has made every single mechanic that's been introduced into Just Cause perfect. It's got the best driving, the best combat, and most of all, the best movement. And I'm going to be breaking down today some of the more advanced movement techniques that I've discovered in my time playing uh, both Just Cause 3 and Just Cause 4 and sharing it with everyone because I don't think it's uh, common. A lot of stuff I feel like I do in my gameplay just not a lot of people are aware of and you can do in Just Cause 4. Like I watched the speed run for this game and it doesn't really incorporate any of the tricks that I have been using in my short time playing this game so far which is why I am going to be uh, trying to get the world record in the speed run of this game. But anyway, I'm just going to be demonstrating to you all some of these more advanced techniques in Just Cause 4. The first one, and the easiest one that almost anyone can really pull off, is one that actually is a move you can do, not just in this game, but a move that originates from Just Cause 3. In Just Cause 3 and 4, you can do this move I like to call the grapple jump. Now, to form a grapple jump, it's pretty simple. All you have to do is grapple up onto a high up object that's way above Rico in height, right? And then you, while, once you grapple, you reel into the point you're at. But right before you come in contact with the point, you cancel the grapple hook and then pull back on your movement, stick or key. In this case, I'm on PC, so I'm going to press S, and I'm going to be pulled back. And after doing this, we will perform a grapple jump. So here is the demonstration. As you can see right there, you just gain a ton of height from doing this technique. Anyway, and in comparison, this is what it looks like if I were to just use the parachute instead, right? It's far slower, and I don't even get the same level of height that I get, and I have to go for that Indian animation for the wingsuit just to do that. And that's sort of the fundamental of advanced movement, the fundamentals of advanced movement in Just Cause 4, is the process of using the... Uh, canceling of a grappling hook because as it stands in vanilla the fastest the way that the game allows most people and how most people do get on top of objects is by doing this is they grapple to the very side of the top of the top of the door building right? and then they get into the stance where Rico's touched against the wall and then they just sort of let him pop right up now this is really slow and which is why grappling jump grapple jumps are just so useful is because you can just do this instead and I don't have to go for that animation, I don't have to stop moving, I don't have to don't do anything. I can still keep shooting all while that's happening. I can keep moving. And in this game, movement is what keeps you alive and not getting killed. So if you just if, if, if anyone can pick up any basic knowledge and play this game or play Just Cause 3, just learn to maneuver over objects by using the grappling grappling. Like basic crap like that can just completely change how advanced you are at the game. But grapple jumping is the only mechanic that you can find here in both Just Cause 3 and Just Cause 4. From now on, all the mechanics I'm going to be talking about, I believe, are only present in this game. Right? And which brings me to the second object, uh, main advanced movement technique, that I believe is probably the most influential and fast and coolest trick that I've found playing this game. And that's the trick known as grapple running. Now, if I were to ask you, like, what the fastest core move way to travel a horizontal distance in this game, you would probably say the wingsuit. And I would say to you that you are correct. Because the wingsuit is, in most instances, the most consistent way to quickly travel across a horizontal area. But this new technique, grapple oh, running, okay. is actually a very fast way to cover horizontal distance, but doesn't sacrifice the controllability and safety that the wingsuit sacrifices. 
and I'll just demonstrate. To order to perform a grapple jump, it's the same process. The grapple run is the same process as performing a grapple jump. Except instead of pulling back on the movement key, you simply just reel in, cancel, and then start and just let Rico fly forward, and you'll perform a grapple run, right? And the grapple run is basically by chaining in between these sort of. I'll just show you. So here I am. I'm gonna aim at this wall, reel in, cancel, find a new thing, reel in like that. Actually, I want to head over here now. Run right over here, grab this tree, head over here, go oh, over here now. I should actually perform a grapple jump over this thing. Run over here, grapple jump up here. Wingsuit down. One way to do it. Yeah, grapple running is really useful. Because yeah, there's numerous instances in the campaign and the spaces in general where you're put in a position where Rico's maybe on the inside of a building or just an area surrounded by walls that the wingsuit just really isn't useful for being in. Because when you're in a wingsuit, you know, if you just slightly graze a wall, Rico's gonna, you know, fall down. So that's what grappling jumping and grapple running are both very useful for, is that it gives you that control that the parachute and wingsuit sacrifice. Now, of course, it takes a lot more skill, as you're gonna have to be constantly targeting in between different buildings and doing stuff like that. And there's numerous instances uh, where you're not gonna have some object nearby to grapple onto. Because in order to perform a grapple run, you can't just grapple against the floor. You gotta constantly be having some height or else you'll just hit the ground and it'll be canceled. But yeah, that is grapple running. And that's probably the uh, cooler technique that I'm about to show today. But we also have some other really cool techniques that I really want to get to. And the next one is of course the parachute jumping. Parachute jumping is a really cool technique, but before I can actually show you how to use it, it's I have to first teach you some basic knowledge to the animations that can play when using the parachute. And this is just going to apply to a lot of things for advances cross movement that you just kind of have to know through experience and learn through experience some of the knowledge, like ideas like oh hey you can't you don't actually start reeling in with a grappling hook the moment you press the grapple key or with the wingsuit, right? This basic kind of stuff like that. And the animations that play, depending on whether you're at your reeling or where you're at, is one of those basic knowledges. Now, luckily, this is a pretty consistent thing that almost anyone can immediately pick up on just from me telling you. So, basically, here I am. I'm going to enter the parachute right now, and I'm not going to use the real key at all. I'm just going to enter the parachute as you normally would. All right, that's the animation that plays right there. Now I'm going to enter the parachute, but this time I'm going to hold the real key. You can see I gained a little more height, and Rico did an animation that is like him doing a backflip. Now, we do not want that animation where he does the backflip. If you want to do the parachute jump, we have to get that first animation. But this kind of bothers us because like grapple running and grapple jumping requires that we be reeling in. So in order to do a parachute jump, what you have to do is just while you're reeling in, right before you come in contact with the wall or whatever point you're at, you let go of the real key, and then you press the space bar or the parachute key to do that. And then the moment you press that space bar, you just have to press it again to cancel the parachute, and then you'll do the jump. Well, here's why it's, here's how I'll show you why it's useful, is that you can jump over objects by doing this. So here's one example. See, like, it's just like that. I gained so much vertical and horizontal height by doing that. And it's super useful because that first, the reason why you don't want to do this other animation is because when you do this animation, it takes, you can't immediately cancel it. It takes like you have to go through the backflip before you can cancel the parachute. But with the default one, it's just instantaneous. So you don't lose any of that momentum, but you still get the little hop that Pico does when you do that crap. And that's what the parachute's kind of primarily used for in advanced movement, is more or less just a way to adjust yourself and provide you control in an instance. So that's just the parachute jump. It's super useful. Uh, another fun thing, you just saw me do it right there, but I'll break it down, is a more effective way of closing the wingsuit. All right? Now, there's th three ways to close the wingsuit in the game, I found. And the slowest way that the game gives you is this way, which is to use the wingsuit break. Which is simply put, you just do this, and then you hold the control or brake key. And Rico, after you hold, if you're slow down enough, he'll close the wingsuit. And 
The break is terrible. It sucks. It doesn't give you any control, and it brings you down to a halt. And it just takes way too long to do that. So most people, if they want to exit out of Wingsuit, they will just enter the parachute. Or we'll do the second way you can enter a parachute, which is simply you grapple the ground and then press the parachute key to cancel it and reel to the ground. That's a fast way to do it. But I've actually found an even faster way to do it that is really cool looking. So simply put, all you have to do is... Well, that was bizarre. All you have to do is enter the wingsuit, and the moment you do that reel in, the moment you press the parachute key, you cancel the hook. Just like that. And the reason why this can actually look really cool is when you combine it to doing some super fast movement. Check this out. Like, it just is, it's, it's ridiculous, but it, it's just what Just Cause is. Like, this Rico can just basically become Superman and just fly around the city doing whatever he likes. It's really cool. And so that's just the way to do that. But now we're going to talk about a far more broad thing in terms of advanced movement, but it's a mechanic that not a lot of people are aware of. The reason I say it's broad is because it's not it's just something that applies to many different things. It's just something you gotta gotta you gotta get a feel for if you want to start using it properly. But in order to do it, you have to understand the mechanics of how the system works. So let's say I'm in my parachute, correct? And while I'm in my parachute, I can, you know, reel into the ground, I can pull myself around like so, right? But if I were to, you know, while I'm parachuting and I reel and I enter my wingsuit, whatever I was reeling into is cancelled. The grapple is cancelled when I go into the wingsuit. That's how it works when you enter wingsuit from parachute, right? But that's not actually how it works for the wingsuit to parachute. Because you see, if I'm in wingsuit, right, and I grapple onto something, but then I enter the parachute, that grapple is actually maintained through the animation. So I can be wingsuited, enter this, and then while I'm in my parachute, and while I'm doing the parachute animation, I'll still be getting reeled in to that point, as if I was just reeling with the parachute. And now you may be sitting here like, Danny, well, why do I want to know that knowledge? Well, number one, it helps you maintain your speed, because if you're reel boosting while in the wingsuit, you'll reel boost while you're in the parachute as well. All, the, all I have to do is just hold the shift key. So I just have to reel boost here, hold shift key, and bang. Just like that. And also because since you're reeling into an object with the parachute, you can do some turning that doesn't... So you keep moving fast, but you get that turning control. The wingsuit doesn't get out. And so you can really mash it into like this sort of thing where you can just start basically just becoming crazy. <clears throat> Ignore that. And it's, you really want to be limiting. In my opinion, it looks way cool cooler if you try to limit the amount of times you enter the wingsuit and the parachute from the wingsuit to try and save yourself. But by doing this technique, you can really fluidly add parachute into your movement and make it look cool. Next up is another technique that's not even a technique, but as much as it is just general knowledge that I think most people should know. Because I see all the time people playing a Just Cause 3 or Just Cause 4 who do this problem, and I, and I do this too. I suffer from this problem forever, and I still do it now. But it's an issue basically where you don't, uh, many people don't understand how entering the wingsuit from the parachute works. And the reason I say this is because usually this scenario will happen where someone's in the wingsuit, and they come across a mountain or something that they want to climb up, right? And then they miscalculate or something like that, and they hit the ground with the wingsuit, right? But while they're falling, they enter, they grapple the ground, and then they enter the parachute, right? And then they want to go back into the wingsuit from the parachute, right? So what they'll do is they'll grapple up somewhere, and then press the wingsuit key, and then this is this is what'll happen. Is that they'll be in the parachute, they'll grapple up, and they're like, okay, now I want to enter back into the wingsuit. And, oh, and then they crash into the wall, and they're like, oh, that's a, that was my bad. So then they'll do it again. I've seen people literally do this. I've seen they, they, they mess up the first time, and... Just go ahead and they do that same thing again. Now, why is this happening? Well, because you have to understand how the wingsuit actually operates in terms of where it points itself. 
Entering the wingsuit from the parachute, Rico will always come out parallel to the ground. Check this out. So for example, if I'm entering flying down like this to the parachute, that's the only time Rico will come out of the wingsuit with like slight degree to him. But I'm pulling up, if I'm pulling up like this, he comes out flat. He'll come out flat. He'll be parallel to the ground when he do that. If I'm reeling in while I'm doing that and the parachute's looking all wacky, he'll come out flat. It's just the fundamental thing that no matter what you do, if you're reeling, if you're going up, you're going down, Rico's going to come into his wingsuit on parachute, flat and parallel to the ground. Okay? If you are free falling, Rico will come flat out. Actually, he won't. I believe he will. If you do, if you're free falling and you aim down, Rico will aim towards the reticle. Yeah. So, <clears throat> anyway, forgive me. What a lot of people don't do and what they mess up is they try to fly back up a mountain by ent because they get taught by the game that, oh, if I'm on the ground, wherever the grapple hook is, I'll enter the wingsuit pointed in that direction. But that don't work with the parachute, right? Well, actually, it does, but it, kind of in a messed up manner. I'll, I'll show you what happens. You see, I'm going to try and enter the wingsuit from the parachute, but I'm going to be reeling in. And you'll see what happens. <clears throat> Nothing. Yeah, never mind. I, I thought I was mistaken for a second and that I could do it some certain way, but no. So you can never enter the wingsuit in the point in a direction from the parachute. You'll always be flat to the ground or pointed down. Okay? So this is how you're supposed to, in my opinion, get up something. If this, if this scenario occurs where yeah. you crash into the side of a mountain or whatever and I, I couldn't why, why couldn't I fall off the mountain? In, into the building. So you... Rico is actively trying to not get hit by the building. What are you doing? Okay, so let's just say, oh, I hit the building, and uh-oh, uh-oh. So then I enter parachute. Don't do this. You drop parachute, and then you do that. Right? That's how you're supposed to enter the wingsuit. Because grappling outside of the wingsuit, and then into this, it will cause you to actually point in the direction you want to go. But you're kind of noticing there that Rico's doing that weird turn thing. Well, that's the sort of the nature of this game. It was even worse in Just Cause 3, but Just Cause 4 has the same issue. Where the game doesn't like to see Rico wingsuiting straight up. They never want to see that. They don't like to see you wingsuiting straight up anywhere. So whenever you do point straight up in any direction while wingsuiting, the game just kind of starts to break on itself. Because it's, I'm not, maybe it's because if you do, you can do a, uh, I believe, like a loop-the-loop -loop or something like that. You can do a flip in the air if you pull back long enough. Maybe that's what causes the problem. I don't know. But by going straight up, it's going to be kind of broken. So that's what you got to be careful for when you do this crap. And you got to be especially careful when you do the real boost takeoff. And I'll demonstrate why you got to be extra careful here. But check this out. Okay, never mind. We're gonna be flatter. We gotta be flatter. Oh darn it! Well, in Just Cause Three, this was even worse. But essentially, what would happen? I'll try and keep doing it so you can see it. But if you real boosted into a flat and you start heading straight up, the game Rico just starts spazzing out, doing like a bunch of twists and turns, like that, like that, right there. He just starts span spazzing out, and twisting about. So that's just something you have to consciously be careful of and be aware of when you're going straight up and doing that. And yeah, so let's just try it right here. Like even though I was like completely in the opposite direction, he still twisted around. Like that's just the name. So now we're going to talk about one final technique about, uh, I would say that's kind of slightly advanced, but not really, but it, it's basically making the wingsuit air brake actually useful. Because, as I was said earlier, the wingsuit air brake, it sucks in this game. It's useless, it, it has no point, because, simply put, whatever turn control you get out of it, it, it just slows you down way too much to actually make it useful. Right? So, it is useful, however, in one instance, and that's this. If you are, you know, in wingsuit, and you are flying straight down like so, the best way to save yourself is to use the air brake. 
that's the only instance where the air brake is really useful, in my opinion. And that's making you stop, like, aiming towards the ground. Right? Because if you do the crap, recoil he'll just immediately start becoming parallel and level with the ground while he's doing that. And this can save your, like, hide from hitting the ground. But it's also still an issue because you're going to be slowed down a ton when you do this. And you need to be, like, pretty... Or you have to do this pretty early. You can't do it late into the ground. So even if you do this technique, you're not going to be able to immediately, like, start reeling in fast somewhere. So it's just more of those, one of those things that you can use the air brake this way. But it's just best to never end up in that scenario where you have all that vertical momentum. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So I would say that's about all of the advanced techniques I can think of currently for Just Cause 4's movement system. There's maybe a few other things I could point out, but I, I don't think they would have too much point. It's because a lot of it is simply stuff that you can just learn for yourself. I think the big takeaways of this video are just incorporate grappling, canceling your grappling hook more into your moves, you know, be more mindful with how the wingsuit and everything works. And, and this actually, like, you know, give the game systems some thought. because. There's some really intelligent minds at Avalanche who put a lot of effort into these systems and these animations. And like this, it, even though Just Cause does have this sort of perception of being this junk food, dumb destruction game, it is a pretty advanced, skillful, skillful game if you want it to be. So yeah, I hope you uh, take these techniques somewhere. Thanks.